there we are. I believe we're on. Well, hello and good morning. Welcome to Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. At our new time of 9.30 a.m., it is Monday, September 23rd, 2024, and we're so glad that you've joined us today. Uh, this is a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, where I'm, the, uh, I'm blessed uh, to be the minister uh, and head of staff. And as uh, we go uh, through life together, we're always trying to figure out where's God in everything. So one of the ways that we do that is through ministry. So we have this reflective time that we provide and uh, we go through and take a little bit of time to say hello to folks. A lot of people use this as a beginning of their day, but many folks will join us later and watch the recorded version. And if you're watching now, you found us live on our Facebook page, but you can also find us over there on our YouTube channel, where we do all of our all of our services and uh, and uh, other uh, video offerings are available there. But uh, we also worship live and in person at 10 o'clock on Sundays. All right. If you want to know more about us, though, the best way to do that, go to our website, www.allenparkpreds.org. All right. And this is a new thing for us here at 9.30 a.m. Normally, we've been at 9 a.m., so we made this kind of correction just to get in here. And, you know, I would love for you to put down here, if, if you're a new watcher live because of the time change, that, that'd be great to know. But uh, so this is great because we can, uh, we've got a lot going on at the church. And so at, at nine o'clock, there's some stuff that I can uh, be with our little ones uh, in the preschool. So that's what we did. My Aunt Mary, hello. Suzanne Maxey, good morning. Marvelous Monday. Wow. Hi, Ken Woods. Happy, happy, Ken Woods. And, uh, Sue Tucker is with us and there. We've got uh, our communication director, Carrie Van, is down there in the comment section putting up all that stuff. She'll also put up all the readings, the four readings that we'll do here. Amy Bowerman, good morning. We continue to pray for you and your mother-in-law. Hi, Linda Wolf. Norma Bentley. Joy and Steve Yamber, good morning to you. Good to see you. All right. Well, you know what? I was a little worried that we might, but we have the same number of people here that we usually do. So that's that's really good. But now my timing is all messed up because I used to be able to look at the clock and say, now I should move into this. And I, so we're getting there. So I got about a minute and then we should. So news of the day. News of the day. Um, you know, boy, I had a great weekend. I really did. I hope you guys did too. Uh, we uh, uh, did a wedding uh, for a, a wonderful young couple, members of the church, and uh, it was a good time. Uh, just uh, just getting a chance to meet and to talk with other people. There was folks from South Carolina. There was folks from New York City, and uh, they were all, they all had a very deep faith in God, and it was wonderful to see that intersection um, in the wedding as we, as we looked, wished uh, Patrick and Grace a blessed uh, married life together. So, um, but as I was looking at that, I realized, you know, um, there's very little time that we can actually get together and praise God as a group, right, other than on Sundays. But then I thought, you know, we kind of do this, do it here. So I feel good about that. So we've got 13. That's good that we've got 13 there. If you want about news of the church, best way go to that website that I said and if you right off that first page there you'll come across um, and there should be up there um, you can go over to I can't see it there it is and there's Sunday uh, all of our bulletins but there's calendars and feeds and you can get up there pull it up and you can see now there is something really really big going on there's this is a busy busy day at the church mostly tonight, right? Because there are, there's a camp committee meeting at 7 p.m. And if you're involved with that, you should have received a Zoom link from Carrie. And then I just sent out some more information um, today. So we'll, we'll be meeting at 7 on Zoom, right? But here at the church at 7 p.m., 
the Detroit chapter of the American Guild of Organists is going to put on a recital. And some of it is, uh, you'll know that uh, 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 you'll, uh, it would be a wonderful time. And I think I might come and just take that meeting here at 7 p.m. So when it's over, I can go out and maybe hear some of that organ music. We'll see what happens. So those are going on. It's also a Boy Scout night. So there's lots of stuff going on at the church tonight. Okay. And uh, so there we are. We're going to move over here. We're going to start our readings. And the first thing I'm going to do is just try to, well, you know what? I'll, I'll admit it. I got to calm myself down before I read scripture because I just, you know, get into, am I missing anything? Just got to let, let the words flow and settle. So I do this breathing discipline where I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for a count of five, and then exhale for a count of five. If you'd like to, I'd welcome you into this. All right, here we go. All right, come Lord Jesus. Here we go. Our first reading for today is Psalm 57. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge. Until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. Selah. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Selah. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will <clears throat> awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. All right. Good intro. Now we're moving into a new book of the Old Testament. Remember, I always say, well, we read these. These are historical books, um, prophetic books, wisdom books. Well, we have kind of a unique one here, and um, it's Esther. And this is a, this tells a story that doesn't occur at all in the, in the Holy Land. This occurs a long, long time ago in Persia, so modern-day Iran, um, and it has to do with a king whose wife is um, unfaithful to him or doesn't give him enough honor, I guess. So he goes looking for a new wife, and they have a they have a uh, beauty pageant, I guess is the best way to put it. And a woman by the name of Esther wins that, and she's Jewish, but nobody knows that she's Jewish. So, um, excuse me. So she hides it. Now it turns out that there is. Asser House is the king, by the way. That doesn't make a whole lot of difference in the whole story. So um, she has a cousin, a male cousin, by the name of Mordecai, who's Jewish. He's a Jewish leader. And he hears and he finds out that. Um, there is uh, one of the king's powerful advisors by the name of uh, Hanan, or Haman, I'm sorry, Haman, and um, is plotting to kill all the Jews because they're going to make 
They're going to blame all the problems, some of which are Haman's issues, on the Jewish people, right? Does it, I mean, this happens. This ends up happening in, in Nazi Germany, too. So lest we think that, uh, that it's never, that it, it's, it's too big to ever happen. Let's remember that it did happen. So anyway, so we're hearing this story, and Mordecai, uh, Mordecai has this information about Haman, and so he is entrusting Esther with that information and saying, do something. Okay, let's listen for the word of the Lord. When, Ist oh, oh, Esther. when Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed and sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hatlock, uh, Haddock, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what was happening and why. Mordecai had dressed himself in sackcloth and ashes and was sitting. Haddock went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, so that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for his for her people. Haddock went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Haddock and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone, May that person live. I myself have not been called to come into the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows, perhaps you will come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Oh, thanks be to God. This is another really good story um, out of it. And, and uh, so we'll see how this happens. But So you can see the king. Esther is his wife, but even then she only comes in uh, when she is asked, when the scepter, you know. So if you go into the inner court of the king, uh, unannounced or uninvited, doesn't matter who you are, you die. So um, she says, I'd love to go in, but uh, I can't. I, and it's been 30 days. I'll go in for sure. And then uh, Mordecai says, look, this is God's work. and You're involved in this. And if you don't want to do it, then God's going to do it another way. But for you and your household, um, it would be best, right, if you participated. So then she she gets into it, and she begins it. And that's what we're going to hear about the rest of the day. Good reading. All right. All right, we'll go over here. In Acts. Oh. Excuse me. All right, we have another reading, uh, out of the, but now we're going to read out of the New Testament, and we're continuing to walk our way through uh, this uh, book, Acts of the Apostles, 
and uh, we're in the 18th chapter, the first 11 verses. So we were with uh, Paul on his missionary journey. They're going back to check with the churches uh, that they had already established. Um, we heard about that. Um, um, so we've heard about this Lydia, the purveyor of purple cloth, um, and uh, how she and her and she was a God fearer. She believed in a spiritual. She was spiritual, but not religious. And then he, she hears about the pathway to God through Jesus Christ, and she accepts it. And then she, she is ba She and her whole household are baptized into the faith. All right, that's kind of where we left it. So we have Paul and Silas, and they picked up Timothy along the way. Timothy is a young uh, person under training. Uh, so. The big thing here is that Paul and Silas and Timothy, they're all Roman citizens. They're Jewish, but they're Jewish Christians, but they're also Roman citizens, which means that they weren't subject to be to the same beatings and uh, well and persecutions. You would think, but they all pay the price. Uh, but we're going to hear about this. So here we go. Paul and Silas and Timothy. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corneth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, a tent maker, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with uh, proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and re reviled him in protest, he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then he left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the official of the synagogue, became a believer in the Lord, together with all his household, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul because became believers and were baptized. One night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will lay a hand to harm you, for there are many in this city who are my people. He stayed there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So this is the early journeys, and we're hearing about Corneth. Um, uh, you know, we always say, why, why Jesus then, at that time frame, and in that spot, when the whole world, right? Why did, why did God choose to act in that time, in that space? And one of the things we can look at and see is that, um, you know, there's some, uh, there's, the, the Middle East was just the center of, of, of the world trade, right? The East and the West met in the Middle East, right? And um, so lots of people from different countries just traveling these roads, these Roman roads, right, that, that Rome had put in that could handle all of this heavy traffic. So with all the movement of goods also came people, and Corneth was a center of that because it was transportation. Corneth was on an isthmus, and um, they could save a lot of time sailing around this isthmus by just transporting it across. So many different people from many different places. What a great place to spread the word. Okay. So they're in Corneth. We have Silas and Timothy, and, and um, they came in. So we have Paul, right? And um, they're talking about this time in Corneth and how not everybody listens to him. He just shakes the dust off and 
he's going to the synagogues and they're revolting against him saying this isn't this is uh, this is preposterous right this is um, this isn't right so he says well you know if I can't beat win you I'm just gonna go after the uh, the Gentiles and he did and so we have two letters in the New Testament that are Paul's letters to the churches to the churches in Corneth and um, we actually think that that might be three letters that there were three letters that were shoved together into those two at some point so he had a very very good and, and uh, we get a lot of information about early Christianity in those letters okay now we're gonna move over to Luke and uh, so Luke Luke is writing this letter to his dear friend, Theophilus. And uh, we're going to read the first four verses out of the first chapter as an introduction. And then we're going to move over into chapter 3 and read the first 14 verses there, because that's what we really want to do. But we need this introduction into it. Here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today out of the Gospel of Luke. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been filled, fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region Ituria and Tricotinus, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caphias, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats, two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. Wow. So we're hearing about uh, the way it was. Um, and Luke's writing it because he's apparently he's seen quite a number of Gospels. And now, we have four that are in what we call the canon of our Bible. And we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, there are other ones that are out there. We call them secret gospels and things. You've probably heard about them. 
people say, oh, these were either just uh, discovered or, or that uh, they were suppressed by the early church, right? Those are the, the two words. And actually, neither one of those statements is true about the secret gospels. They've been known. It's just that um, when the early church uh, wanted to put the canon together, they wanted to use the ones that had spread because that indicated that they were blessed by the Holy Spirit and it was God's intention. And so they came across these uh, secret gospels, but what they really were were very local gospels, and they hadn't really grown out of an area, indicating what that they hadn't been there for very long. Right? Once something's been there for a while, it becomes known, you know, in greater things. So that's really, there wasn't any, um, you know, the, the chances of them being an accurate reflection of what really happened at the time of Christ, very low. All right, so... Uh, I think they've made a good decision. Although it can be interesting to read them. They're available. They're published. But uh, and I actually have a few of them. I've read them. Um, but these four that we got here, they're still the best. <laughs> they're the truth. We need to follow these. So um, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, as we get going here, uh, we start to see the setup. Right, and the fact that we hear about uh, why it was written, what was going on, and the fact that John the Baptist was at work preparing the way, but and this wasn't something new, right? This was something um, known, right? It was known through the books of what we call the Old Testament, through the prophet Isaiah. Prepare the way for the Lord. This is what John the Baptist was doing, and we have this thing. So you have to remember in the vision is that uh, if you look from Jerusalem, in south, kind of more southeast, um, there's the Bacaw Valley, and this vision is that the valley will be lifted up and the hills will be brought down, so filled in and brought down, and everything will be made straight for what? The coming of the Lord. So, all right. And then it says, well... Uh, when they came out, and they, they're asking John the Baptist, to, now they're asking him, what do we do right now that we're baptized? Well, you go out and you live. And, and you want an example of how you live? If you have two coats and you see somebody that needs needs one, give it, give, give one to them, share, right? Tax collectors who were considered to be the most vile and evil people around, right? Because they were working for Rome. What do you do? Take no more than what is due you. They, they were allowed. Tax collectors were allowed to skim off the top. That's how they were paid. And some of them would take more, right? So just do, not prescribe for you. Soldiers, what are we doing? We're, 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 we're fighting for Rome. What do we do? Don't extort money, right? Just be satisfied with your wages. Okay. All good, 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 good. Words for today. We'll go back over here and uh, see if there's been any prayer requests. I've got to get back to where I left off. There we are. Hi, Joan Riggs. Hi, Judy Martin. Hi, Judy Hatch. Sandy, good morning. Hi, Norma. You need prayers for Joe and Melinda. He's had a stroke and, then, and he has Parkinson's disease. Okay, we will. We will. Thank you, Carrie, for putting up all this stuff. Hi, Janet Lyons. Good morning for you. Hi, Amy. There it is. Oh, yeah. Malice in the Palace. Hi, Nathan. God bless you, too. All right. Here we go. We've got some praying to do. So don't worry if you said, oh, I had a prayer and you're watching this later on. You say, oh, I didn't get it in. Yeah, you can get it in. Just go to that website, WW Allen Park Press. And then on that main page, you'll see a picture of me holding a kid. And then you just go over to the right side and you'll see an underlined, highlighted prayer button. Press it. And then you'll come up a form. You can fill out as much or as little of that information, including whether you want it to be made public or it's just a private prayer that you want me. And I, as soon as I get that, it comes to me and to me alone. When it does, right, when it does, I stop what I'm doing and I pray for you or whatever your need might be. 
So remember that. But now, we're ready to pray now. So let's go ahead and pray. Hello, Lord. It's us. We're here again. And we come because we believe. Lord, we wouldn't pray if we thought it was pointless or worthless or you didn't exist. But we also come because this binds us together in a fellowship of love. And so we thank you for your words of truth that are spoken to us through the reading of your scripture. And we thank you for the support that each and every person in this group gives to the others. And Lord, uh, we thank you for the miracles that we've seen and the ways that we've seen you move among us. So as we come here, we of course want to lift up those who are in need of healing. And uh, we've heard of new people that we want to keep, um, keep in our prayers today. So, Lord, um, as we open up our prayer today, we want to pray for Joe and Melinda. Joe has suffered a stroke, and he also has Parkinson's. Linda is his caregiver. Lord, we pray for that. We pray for all caregivers. We continue to, to lift up Amy as she cares for her mother-in-law. And, Lord, we know. We know that as some people age and as they reach an age that um, they've had a full life and they start to feel the aches and the pains and the loneliness that's involved with growing old and they call out for you, Lord. So to those people, give them comfort and peace as they reach the end of their time here, that they'll know of the uh, peaceful and truthful existence of the eternal life. And we continue to pray for all of our young children that we know of with cancer, but all of those who we don't. We're going to pray for Emma. We want to pray for Olivia. Uh, and we want to pray, Lord, for Ava, those three young girls. We just continue to pray for them. Not all of them, but Lord, they have their friends. And gosh, They've been exposed to an awful lot of the pain in the world at an early age. They didn't deserve that, Lord. So we don't understand it, but Lord, we can gain so much by seeing the fact that they're so brave, but that's all they know is to respond that way in bravery. So we pray that you'll keep them stronger than any illness. And for anyone who was ill, we ask for healing. And Lord, as we look out at this world, we just want to see. Maybe it's become too late. People say in the Middle East that neither Hamas nor Israel truly desire peace. And maybe it's that way in the other areas of the world where we see violence. But Lord, you can make it happen miracle of peace and people living together and then coming together to love and to respect each other despite differences or perceived or perceptions. Lord, that's what we pray for. A world where there is no fear and that people will have the freedom to worship you and to live life abundantly. We do ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. Hey, God bless. We did pretty good here. We did pretty good, I think, uh, timing-wise, for our first time. And um, good to see you all. Hi, Doug Goddard. Good to see you. Not bad. Didn't have a great fall-off of numbers. so. But thank you so much for joining us. And God willing, the creek don't rise. I'll be back right back here with you tomorrow right, to bring more news and devotions from Allen Park Presbyterian Church. You have a blessed day, all. God bless. Bye-bye.